Show. My name is Ryan. I'm the host of the program. It's our Aaron Carter Gets Busted with Weed edition of Ryan's Rock Show. Today we're going to be speaking to a band from Louisiana. They're called As Cities Burn. But first, your weekly essential where we play you a band that you need to know if you don't know them already. This band is called Pelican, and you're listening to Ryan's Rock Show. And for your weekly essential, be sure to send us your comments, your questions, and or your suggestions to ryansrockshow.com. Now, I had a chance to meet up with Cody and Colin from As Cities Burn. Here's what they had to say. When you first started touring, did you book your own yep. before you got signed? We booked our own for a long time. How long did you book your own? 2005? Yeah. Yeah? 2004. We did two years, two, and a, two years, a year and a half of just booking our own tours, and we were touring full time. So we're booking our own tours, and it was, you know. How did you book your tours while you guys were on the road? Um, well, we do it when we were home. We'd start it, and at the time, it wasn't MySpace or Pure Volume. It was MP3.com. Yeah. And we'd go on there and find bands and cities, and just and then there there was a there was a website back in the day called BYOFL, um, and you could go on there, and the promoters would just be like, "Hey, if you need a show, email me." And so we would just get on a long list and just email bands, yeah. anyone who had any connections promoting it. We we book a tour, and half the dates would fall through usually. But some of them worked, and some of them, a hand, small handful would actually be a lot of fun, and we'd make a little money, and it would keep us on the road. So. Do you think it's easier for kids to book tours now with MySpace and the internet than back then, where you just had MP3.com and you didn't have all these networking sites? Uh, I think now there's more bands, and there's more promoters, and more there's definitely more networking, like you said. Uh -huh. But now it's almost this oversaturation. There's too many bands, really? so there's less money. Like I know a venue at home, like. He can do shows every night, but no one's heard of the bands yet because bands are able to tour just from MySpace pages and all that. Mm -hmm. and so the venue makes less money, so they pay the bands less money. And it's just kind of like this cycle of it's easier to tour and meet people and the world is smaller because of MySpace, yeah. but it's kind of made it this weird. Like when we started touring, there weren't a whole, there were a whole lot of bands touring, but just not like every band in the world touring. Yeah. And so like there would be, we'd play a show and it'd be us and locals, so we'd get money. Now it's just like five bands are going out together, and there's a hundred dollars yeah. to split between five bands, and it's just Damn. not. Well, yeah. you're you're saying that there's an oversaturation. Uh -huh. If there's an oversaturation, do, do you feel that it affects you guys where you're at now? Well, I mean, I think you reach a certain point where it stops affecting you as much. I guess, like mm -hmm. if we were in competition with, say, these um, un, you know the unsigned bands that don't have booking agents, then like. Yeah then it would affect us more, but not now since, like, I guess we have a booking agent, you know, like, it's, I guess it's way easier for our booking agent to book than it would for, like, someone to pay attention to, like, a kid who's 17 and in a band that no one's really heard of, so um, I don't think it really affects us that much. We have a leg up in just that we have a record deal, and we've put out two records, and we have uh -huh. some people that work for us, which yeah. helps, but still... I mean, it's a real crazy time to be in music in general. Which the true. way people aren't buying records and are going to shows, but it's like more focused. Like people aren't going to do shows in general anymore. They're like picking specific bands and like. Mm -hmm. So it's just a, a weird time. What's your opinion on that? On like digital downloading and and stuff like that? Kids aren't going out and buying physical copy, but they're downloading it. I don't really, I don't really mind it because I mean I, I you know. It's hypocritical because I download CDs myself, yeah. or like I haven't, I haven't bought a CD in a long time, and like I would rather people just have our CD, you know. Uh -huh. um, our label would probably be pissed if I said that, but uh, <laughs> um, I think, I think maybe like, you know, we make most of our money on touring and like kids coming to the shows and buying T-shirts and everything. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I think, I think nowadays, like the best way to help out a band. A band of our size mm -hmm. is to, you know, buy merch at the show. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the best thing you can do. I think there's this like, uh, just with politicking is like a big thing with record sales. Like, to us, just being musicians and creating music, the most important thing is that people hear it. But there's also and like record sales just across the board are down. So of course our our record, you know, has like a little bit less sales just because of how the music business is working. And we're like, we don't care if people are getting the record, but with the whole politics of the music business, like booking agents look at how many records you've sold and like 
how you get tours is kind of based around numbers like that. Yeah. So it affects, you know, like people downloading actually affects what tours we get and like mm -hmm. how you get endorsements and just that. It all kind of is a cycle, but in the end, I don't know how much it really affects that and if we should even yeah. care enough to well, discourage it. Well, where do you think it's going to be in like five years from now? Where do you think it's going to change? Because obviously, you guys have been a band for six years. Things have changed a lot with the music industry. Yeah. You know, where do you think we're going to be in five years from now? It's hard to say what kind of medium, you know, the recordings are going to be on. You know, you yeah. never know if there's going to be no hard copies or what. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I think it's just going to take labels getting creative to figure out the best way that they can make money off the recordings that they pay for, you know, and, mm -hmm. and the bands that they put money behind. Um, there's no telling what it's going to be like. Do you think it's ever going to get to a point to where there are no CDs and you just, like, yeah. download it? You do? For sure. Really? I think that it might get to a point where there's no CDs. <coughs> bands will do, like, the special edition thing will be, like, a booklet that you can get mm -hmm. mailed to you or something. But I feel like there's going to be a digital takeover. Right. There will always be CDs, yeah. just in way less quantities, just for people that are collectors and stuff like that. But I think the I think there's honestly going to be uh, this is coming to my theater. You know, I'd be like totally crazy, but <laughs> with the the mass explosion of the numbers of bands and the whole MySpace thing and just mm -hmm. the sheer quantities of people in bands, people are trying to support themselves off bands. I think money will run out and the production like the quality of recordings will go down for a little while and there will be just a dying out there will be a, <laughs> this is so like conspiracy <laughs> but like I just think that there will like people will realize you can't make money being in a band unless you do you know stuff a certain way and you get this uh, to this certain level of legit legitimacy uh -huh. and uh, so there will be a dying out of like these you know bands that are trying to just force things instead of the bands that are just at home writing music until it's the right time and then the, the big bands and so but to say where music is going to be I mean I'm interested to see I yeah. have no idea and there are people trying to be on the forefront of it and trying mm -hmm. to change things and you know capitalize on what they think is going to happen but I don't think there's any booked your own tours for like the first two years what do you say to like kids now that want to get out there and do their own thing do you suggest that they go book their tours my heart goes out to all the bands. <laughs> yeah, for you're real. Like, they're like, fucked, man. It's so hard just to gas <laughs> yeah. these days. I'm like, it's so hard to get anyone to pay attention to you, I'm, I'm sure. You know, I think people were sympathetic to us because, you know, it was just a few years ago that we were booking, our, you know, our own tours. And, like, <coughs> not every single band was trying to do it, you know. So, mm -hmm. it was like, now I don't, I don't even know what to tell bands. I don't want to discourage them from, like, doing, you know what they want to do but it's yeah. just I don't I you don't can't know. imagine doing it all over again yeah I think it'd be so hard at this point yeah and like uh, we used to always tell bands we'd be like what can we do to get signed we'd be like tour tour mm -hmm. tour and now it's like uh, we know a lot of bands that have just had to break up or like had to go on hiatus because they'll try to tour and they'll just run out of money and just be done so like now it's like go home and like focus on music get a good recording and send it to anyone that you can that would know it because I think people get just with the whole MySpace revolution people get a little ahead of themselves where you can go to banned MySpace pages and they'll have like merch for sale and they'll have all these professional pictures and the whole MySpace will be set up yeah. and it'll be like music coming soon and it's like oh. bands that you know might have songs but haven't like developed their, their sound or like got a good recording which is should be the centerpiece of like what everything else is based around. Yeah, for sure. And with the, uh, MySpace, is it, it's created its own culture in and of itself, and it's just crazy <laughs> that people, you know, we have the look, we've got the pictures. I know how many, how many bands are like, dude, we we got T-shirts. Now we're gonna start playing shows and just like weird stuff like that. Yeah. And just like people need to focus on music and let that be like what builds your band up, mm -hmm. regardless of whether that makes you big or. Small. Was getting signed a a major focus for you guys on the road? Yeah, for sure. So how did you hook up with the label? Not to cut you off. No, that, that yeah, I didn't know how to answer that exactly, but I mean, you, you create a band and you start doing it with the intentions of, you know, getting it to the most amount of people possible just because you want people to hear what you have to say. Yeah. And so, we wanted to get signed and we, we had always been fans of Tooth and Nail bands and especially mm -hmm. the, the old school class of solid state bands, you know. Like Stretch Armstrong, Zeno. Uh, yeah, that's old school. Norma Jean, beloved, all that stuff. We were big fans of, and so we kind of 
I don't know. We had been through Seattle just touring by ourselves, you know, from South Louisiana. We had done dates through Seattle, and we had met Haste a Day, and their A&R guy uh, wasn't able to come see us twice. And then finally, Chad Johnson, who is our, is our A&R guy now, mm-hmm. came and saw us in Seattle. And uh, we played, and afterwards he's like, you know what, you guys are good, but keep developing your sound and whatever mm-hmm. and we're just like crushed because we're like dude we've, so really? we've been touring for two years <laughs> we finally get someone to listen to us and they're like keep developing and we're like we well, know, what did he want we're ready to... for it yeah he, he, he just like keep you know writing songs and recording it and we'll figure something out stayed in Seattle that night and he actually called us the next morning he's like you know what we're actually going to offer you a record deal and so it was awesome like classic story of like dog pile in the living room we were all like jumping up the street really? it was awesome did so they give you guys a good advance for your first record? Uh, I mean, to them, I'm sure they thought it was good. To us, not good so, enough. So that's us. how it's always going to be, be between yeah. bands and labels, you know? No, nah, it was good. The, the label's always been good to us. And, you know, bands will always have differences with management, label, booking mm-hmm. agent, like, oh, uh, someone's not working hard enough. But in the end, I think, like, our relationship with them is really good. After getting signed, and you guys are all jumping for joy, you know, once you got signed, what have you learned that's really played a huge effect on your life? I mean, that's a question that I feel like I could write a book on after yeah. touring for five years, you know. What are some of your pet peeves that you, you've come to realize? I think, like, a lot of times the music industry is just, like, uh, it's a lie. It's like a facade a lot of times. Yeah. It's just, like, you know, certain bands will be on the cover of certain magazines and be like, you know, this is the next big thing. It's only because, like, their label put money behind it to, like, to make it something big, you know, and it's just, like, the sad thing is sometimes people will just believe that like yeah. kids kids who are just trying to you know find what's cool or whatever they will just believe whatever a, a magazine will say you know mm-hmm. so it's just like I think I don't know I just rather like uh, it sucks that like sometimes it's like it goes so much about like you know image or like labels will look like like how can we market this band and like you know, make them the next big thing or whatever. Mm-hmm. But like, I think in the end, like the only thing that's lasting with it all is just the songs and like what, like if you have any kind of message, you know. So, yeah. um, I think it's just so backwards a lot of times. So I guess that's a, a giant pet peeve of mine. I guess. It's like I see a lot of bands that they. It's almost like they're recycled. You know, they they play the same stuff and it, right. it seems like that for like a few years. Like you saw that with like new metal. Limp Bizkit and Corn and all those bands and everybody trying to imitate that and now you have this like like I don't even know what to call it but you know it's like this weird emo core War thing core. yeah that whole thing going on how do you react to that like those type of bands are you supportive of that does that like tick you off it's so easy just to be like a dude that's been touring forever who's older who's just not into that I just to say that I think it's all really lame yeah but like Kids are always going to do, I mean, you can't expect an 18-year-old kid who's writing songs to just be have total integrity, be the most yeah. mature musician. He's going to follow what he thinks is cool. And as long as kids are playing what they feel passionate about, even if it's bad music, like, I can't, di- <laughs> I can't not respect that. But at the yeah. same time, I just, like, we, did, we did Warp Tour last summer after, right before our new record came out, uh-huh. and I was just, I felt so detached from what I guess people thought was cool. I just, like, yeah. didn't want to be really a part of, like, kind of like Cody said just like the magazine thing you're kind of fed what's cool and like you see kids you see kids react to it they're like oh this is the band that everyone's talking about I'm gonna go watch them yeah. and whether the band is good or not kids will you know like it and I just I feel detached from that and I, I don't I don't know well your music's a little different from that too you know? yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah it's not that's a, that's probably why in the end I feel detached just because yeah. like, we didn't really fit musically on Warped Tour and I don't know man I never want to discourage anyone to not create mm-hmm. And you can't expect, I keep coming back to you, you can't expect like young kids to just start writing songs like Coldplay and Death Cab. Yeah. Just be like, su- have such musical integrity and like, not care about the way they look. That's not the way, you know, people are. And so, it's just, uh, I think no matter what, it always ends up going around in a circle, like out with the old, in with the new. It's like, the bands that were on the cover of AP, like, Years ago, were like the new metal hey! bands and everything. Hey, What's uh, up, dude? Watching the back. Sorry, I don't know this. Uh, like the, that was that was the hit thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. And now it's just like kind of like you were saying this this other new kind of 
screamo thing, whatever. Um, and it just, I think some sometimes people think that like it's not going to change and like they're always just going to be on top. But it's like you just got to enjoy it all while it lasts, while you're young and like while you're able to play music yeah. um, for a living. It's like something to be so grateful for. And like I think sometimes people just like let it go to their head and then. Mm-hmm. And the next thing they know, it's like they're being replaced by like the next fad or whatever. So, I think you just gotta. Do you ever feel like it? It went to your head. Do you guys ever get an ego boost from it? No, we're like that? really humble. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like the humblest guy. Now. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. yeah no, we're humble. We never got like big enough, or yeah, and yeah, we yeah, aren't big enough to like ever. We've never been in this position where we're bigger. You know, we. And we, I think that, that the building of the character of this band was that hack, hack, hacking it out for two years of no deal, just no money. Oh yeah. Like now we tour with bands, and you know we'll headline and take bands out, and everything is equal from top to bottom. It's just mm-hmm. like how can we help other bands out? And that's the way it's been for us. And so sometimes we get weirded out by. Yeah. It. Do you guys ever get sick of it? Like, do you ever just want to quit and not do this anymore? I think. Uh, I think. Thank you. God always keeps our band just on an empty tank to where it's like I don't, I don't really know where we're gonna go in a, in a month from now you know it's like I don't know if we'll have if we'll be completely empty and just like wanna wanna do something else or whatever but <clears throat> I think we we just always have the smallest boost of energy here and there to get us to the next point and like I'm really grateful for that and um, grateful for our, everything with our band has played out or really wouldn't want it to be any different because I think um, there's like a, a, a lot of people that or a small handful of people that will come to our shows and just kind of like be really cool and say that like mm-hmm. our band has meant something to them I think in the end that means more than if it was extremely successful for only a short amount of time what's a cool story that a fan's come up to you and said We've had, I, I mean the most touching and not to make this sound like trite or anything but like we've, yeah. we've gotten emails from like you know a couple people that have been like I have been ready to commit suicide, and I've been listening mm-hmm. to your record, and I've decided not to do it. I think those were the times, like, uh, we probably got two or three serious email, like, serious emails where you could tell that the person was being, you know, honest, and, and you're just like, holy cow, you know. I almost just said the dumbest thing, like, our music saved a life. It's not like that, but, like, <laughs> the fact that, like, there was a, a moment of inspiration that needed to happen, and it did. Yeah. Uh, I think it's the most honoring thing you know do you write back to those people to yeah a lot people? of times we meet them like they'll come up and say you know you have to wow. meet like two dudes that had some rough times so. what was it like when you guys were like face to face cool just hugged and just really like holy cow man thanks to the guys in as cities burn for coming on the show we leave you this week shining some limelight on the band they're called thrice we'll see you next week on ryan's rock show peace